Cyclone Dicolady sweeps past Mayotte and the Comoros. So after this storm made a hurricane equivalent landfall on the northern tip of Madagascar, it's a similar story almost to what happened with Chido, although much weaker thankfully. This has weakened slightly down to a high-end tropical storm at 14 degrees south, 44.2 east. However, it has been dropping tons of rainfall over Mayotte and the Comoros Islands, and Mozambique is next up on this storm's in this storm's sights. Well, 70 miles per hour, which is 110 kilometers per hour sustained and an estimated pressure of 984 millibars, moving west-southwest at around 17 miles per hour is the latest status on this storm as of 6 p.m. Eastern African time. Well, here it is right now, located on the map, with a wind field extending out up to around 120 nautical miles, which is about 180 or 190 kilometers, um, still near hurricane force and certainly a possibility that it could re-strengthen slightly before it gets to Mozambique and then the massive question as to whether it will actually move inland and weaken a lot more or whether it will just hug the coastline or stay offshore and retain much more of its strength for later. It is 202 kilometers from Villa Matza, 262 from Visalampi, 377 from Nicala in Mozambique, 501 from Angosh and 864 from Kelimani. Those first two locations being in Madagascar. Well, let's take a look at the primary hazard, which we're still saying is flash flooding because it will be producing a lot of rainfall over a short amount of time, particularly over eastern Mozambique when it makes that closest pass. Uh, it may still strengthen a little bit more, so obviously wind is a threat, uh, but we're still overall looking at rainfall. Both of them, of course, are substantial, sizable threats for the eastern coast of Mozambique, over 250 millimeters possible in several areas. We'll cover that in a moment. But the forecast over the next five days or so, you can see here, this is our forecast showing that the storm will just graze the coast of Mozambique and then drop southwards very quickly, then southeastwards, then later on in the forecast you can see it slows down here. That's because of the massive amount of uncertainty over what will actually happen. It's pretty much split down the middle as to whether it will continue that recurvature and accelerate beyond Madagascar or whether it will get caught up and stop in the Mozambique channel and do a little bit of... Uh, um, erratic track making uh, and much more opportunity for it to strengthen if it did that. Well right now decent agreement that the storm's near 70 miles per hour. Interesting that the JTWC are going to be dropping it to 65 miles per hour at their latest update and that's quite interesting because both agencies are calling for a stronger storm than what we're currently saying however as you can see our estimate at the moment is still a little bit higher. Well, Mateo France is still calling for a much stronger storm, and that's mainly because it doesn't take it really into land. You can see it there, uh, calling for the storm to strengthen just before reaching its closest pass to Mozambique, and then strengthening further once it pulls away, moves southwards, and then it's quite close to Madagascar towards that western coast there. These are unofficial watches and warnings that we've put out right now. You can see that red zone for hurricane conditions likely within 48 hours from Lurio southwards in Mozambique there. Wind speed probabilities in percent next seven days. This is for tropical storm force winds. You can see several of those areas really into those high percentage markers and looking down towards southwestern Madagascar, Toliara currently at 50-50 shot of getting tropical storm force winds. Well, this is the latest from the GFS model, and you can see how far inland it takes the storm, and that really scuppers it quite a lot for its later path. You can see it moving southeastly there. It gains some of its strength back, but if it did move inland a fair bit, uh, that would really endanger its chances that it would ever get back to hurricane equivalent status. That's obviously a situation that we wouldn't mind as much, uh, considering that if it does stay out to sea, it could be a very strong cyclone, Although that might mean there's a bigger chance that it goes straight down the middle there and misses all of those land areas. So you've got to weigh up those possibilities. 
In terms of rainfall though, it's going to be a very wet period for the eastern part of Mozambique there, north of Kelimane. We could be looking at some really serious rainfall amounts up towards 300 millimeters. You'll see all of that displayed on the screen in just a second when we move over to the rainfall charts. But once again, showing the radar reflectivity simulation here, showing that the northern and western side of the storm will be the wettest, with some general rainfall all across Madagascar over the next few days, partly associated with the storm, which will be racking up those rainfall totals there as well, albeit more slowly. Take a look at the total rainfall expectations then over the next seven days and you can see as the storm piles into Mozambique south of Nakala uh, you can see some significant rainfall amounts and then that secondary area along the western coast of Madagascar between Toliara and Morondava where we could receive very high amounts of rainfall there up and above 300 millimeters possibly. Another area there near Beira as well not really associated with the storm exactly but looking at high amounts there over 300 millimeters but the highest amount there 15 inches in western Madagascar from the storm and that would be getting on for 400 millimeters of rain and looking at the sea surface temperatures obviously still very warm around the area right now these are reading a little bit low than what they actually are and it's in Fahrenheit so I'll convert to Celsius around 30 degrees maybe one or two spots closing in on 31 degrees actually and land temperatures are much warmer too obviously we know the uh, heat that these regions can sometimes receive getting up towards 40 degrees once again on those land areas bordering the Mozambique Channel very hot indeed so let's take a look at the satellite imagery and we've got quite a bit to show you today this is the latest visible imagery from EU METSAT uh, the storm showing moving west southwesterly it's a bit bare on that southern and southwestern side and the structure of the storm itself has become a lot less uh, organized I would say in those uh, latest uh, well, the last few hours um, it was looking decent last night when it was passing along the northern side of Madagascar but right now uh, there it is uh, really struggling on that southwestern side perhaps inhaling some dry air by the looks of things there but really uh, throwing out that big arm of convection towards the west over Mozambique but look at Mayotte and the Comoros Islands right now right underneath those really high cloud tops uh, probably a lot of rainfall underneath there and again we could be looking at some flooding problems for those islands is a roughly 12 hour loop of how things have progressed since our tropical weather bulletin last night and you can see again how this has been progressing during those visible frames today um, not much else to say i think but you can check all this imagery on the force the team website forcity.com slash satellite and our live tracker which is still active on the youtube channel search force 13 live well, cloud top still really getting up there in a few spots there well into the minus 80s on that big bulk on that northeastern side i think over time we'll be seeing more of it on the northwestern side as well and it's going to be a real question mark now to see whether the storm will actually recover fully and get stronger again it's got a good opportunity right now with those warm sea surface temperatures just whether it manages to deal with that i assume dry air but it could also be wind shear there on that southern side as we look at some wider shots of the mozambique channel region uh, showing how Madagascar is getting a few of those bands as well sweeping down almost halfway across the island now um, and in plenty in Mozambique too uh, not too long until Malawi will be receiving a little bit of rainfall as well and here's the super wide shot showing the whole Indian Ocean not much else going on uh, it's just this storm which we're continuing to eyeball very closely with that possibility of further strengthening obviously a real concern as we continue to watch Cyclone Dicolady.